you got four million dollars to go spend on it. And I, and I said, well, how are we going to make a big period movie like this for four million dollars? We had to find a lot of people who were willing to, to work for very little money. We said from the beginning, you know, it was going to be like Simon Stark. We're all going to live together and there would be no privileged class. It'd be the same for everyone. And little by little, the project attracted people who wanted to do it. Verna said to me, well, we got to put a cast list together to show to Ned. Who can we put in the movie? So we came up with a whole bunch of names. And at the end of the process, Verna said, well, what about this guy that's in Superman? And then Steve and I talked about it. And I said, look, I'm sure he's been offered a lot of physical parts and he's looking for something that will prove what a fine actor he is. So we called him and we went to see him and we pitched the film. It went very well, it was very good meeting, we hit it off immediately and then he read the script and he said, uh, let's go, I I'm game. My problem after Superman was that I was offered uh, many action hero roles and that didn't really appeal to me. Uh, somebody seriously asked me to play Eric the Red, the Viking. I could just see myself with a silver cup with horns on my head. But action adventure wasn't really the, uh, what I was looking for. I was looking for something very quiet, something very different. And I was just struck by this very simple love story that had the unique aspect of time travel. And I thought, as long as we can make it believable about how the character goes back in time, as long as that doesn't seem to be too strange or unbelievable, then I think the movie would work really well. That was my only reservation. I waited a little while. You know, thinking about that, thinking if I could make that believable. And then I decided we should just go for it, you know, that uh, the notion of it was so magical that it would work. Elise was the most important part after Richard, but it was even more important because it was filled with traps. First, the fact that you met her through a photograph, and for 45 minutes, that's all you saw. So I felt that we needed someone who had a lot of mystery. So we started meeting an enormous amount of young actresses, everyone in town, very talented. Every actress we interviewed asked, have you ever been in love? And the only one to say no was Jane Seymour. So I don't know if that affected our judgment or not, but it was interesting. She had the poise, and she also had the mystery. Jane came in and said, I have to play this part. And I mean, I, I just thought that uh, her commitment, her desire to do it. The fact that she was not even embarrassed or shy about making her uh, desire known makes her very vulnerable. I became obsessed with this movie. I read it and I went, oh my gosh, this is the one. It just, it, it sang to me. It just, it, 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 it inhabited me and it was the first time in my life that I just went, this isn't about wanting something. This is about being this character. This is, this is someone I know. I have to do this. I went in to meet them. I'd um, dressed up in a, something slightly period for the, for the audition. I think I had sort of a Victorian-y looking blouse or something. So I was trying to show them what I would look like you know, in that kind of style. And um, Chris Reeve was there. And Chris was talking to me. And I think we talked about silly things like the British royal family or something. I don't know what the subject was. I'll never forget this, they sat together and they were not doing a scene or anything. They were just talking and chatting and, and there was immediately this chemistry between them and together they just looked like a real couple and that was it. The rest of the cast fell into place naturally. We all had choices, but Christopher Plummer immediately became everybody's number one choice for Robinson because he had the class, the poise, the authority, and also he would be good balance with Christopher Reeve. I've always liked those sort of time, going through time, back in time pictures anyway. 
Uh, all the books that refer to that are some of my favorites. So the uh, subject matter attracted me enormously that uh, one could play a character who was rather based on a famous theater manager and theater entrepreneur. He had a, he had a sort of soul and he had a romantic um, education. And so he had a romantic twist to his personality, which made him a little bit more human than just simply being a kind of demigod of the theater. And his love for the character that Jane Seymour plays was perfectly genuine. May I remind you that we leave within the hour. Then, for the companion, I was keen immediately on Teresa Wright because I loved her work in Hitchcock's Shadow of a Doubt and The Best Years of Our Lives. And she was in semi-retirement, so we called her and we told her about the project, and eventually she joined on board. I did it for my grandson because the idea that I was going to work with Superman was, <laughs> you, you know, he was so excited about this. Like everyone, I think I fell in love with the story, the idea of going back in time and it was it just was so different than everything that was going on in films at the time and when i got there and did it actually it was interesting that the whole company had seemed to come to it for the same reason you know they were enchanted by the story and uh, i think that shows through are you all right Susan French, I knew from Jaws, too. Uh, and also, she's an extraordinary lady. We had a, an enormous affinity. And she had this incredible face with this to die for bone structure. And I wanted the old Elise to be stunning. And I remember telling Susan, you only have four words, but everyone will remember those four words. Come back to me. In the screenplay, there is a witness to this story, which is, in a way, is the witness for the audience and is a wonderful character, which is the character of Arthur. Irwin has this quality, which is you love him immediately. He's a very likable uh, old gentleman. If there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. My name's Arthur, and I live in the bungalow behind the hotel. Okay. I got involved with an agent, and the agent uh, saw this part come up one day and he suggested me and uh, he told me that there would be one scene where my character was shown as a young child of about five years old and so on the way to the interview I grabbed a picture of myself at that age to show to them and it turned out that they took that picture and later turned it over to the casting department in Chicago and they found a little boy who looked exactly like the picture and I remember when this little boy came in, we just talked and he had those wonderful eyes and he looked a lot like the photograph I had in my hand. See you around, Arthur. <laughs> 